and he was going on about this master and slave kind of stuff. He said, if, um, if he helps, he can help my daughter and but we would have to become his slaves and he our master. And I didn't know what that meant. And I have the emails and going through them all. Wait, sorry. This is when I your know, daughter was, was, was ill, right? In and hospital, he, he yeah. He was emailing. Yeah, it was about a week before she died. He was emailing yeah. you a week before your daughter died because uh, Miles, I guess, had told him the situation yeah. that you, you you had confided in Miles. Told him everything, yeah. And so he'd gone ahead and told yeah. Simon, and Simon started emailing you out of the blue, uh, saying that he could yeah. save your daughter, um, but you'd have to what become his slave. Yeah. He said he could help your very sick daughter um, mm -hmm. by if you were to become if he was to become your master and you the slave and you and your daughter. Me and my daughter, yeah. This, uh, and he uh, said I'd have slave. to Skype with her immediately. You know, there has been abuse and manipulation going on by Simon Parks with various people. And judging by the messages and emails I've received, it looks like it's been going on for a while and several people were aware of this. So um, if that's the case and you were covering for this man, well, you all need to own up and accept what the public want to say to you and just own up and accept it and swallow it and either move on or climb out of it and pull yourself out of it and build yourself back up again and apologize and prove yourself to be a real truther and not just promoting these charlatans because at the moment that's what a lot of you seem to be doing a lot of people promoted simon parks over the years on every radio show so what does that say about all of you you know and um, there's been a lot of complaints i know over the years about Simon Park, so have all of you just chosen to ignore that? You know, I'm finding this hard to believe, but if it's true, it needs to be said, it needs to be told, and you all need to suffer the consequences of that. is the alien being that I call mum. It's adopted me, basically. Marie Kayali, along with Simon Parks and Miles Johnson, were part of a Channel 4 documentary in 2013 called Confessions of an Alien Abductee. Marie is a long-time UFO investigator and experiencer. I have seen them appear in, your, in my room, and then you are just taken and you go up. And why do they think they've been chosen? Do you think you'll find the answer? I think I'm getting very close, soon. Yeah. Just outside Heathrow Airport is the technical base of a unique support group called a MASH. It's the only British helpline for people who believe they've been abducted by aliens. We come together um, to form a MASH, which stands for Anomalous Mind Management and Abductee Contactee Helpline. It's the only resource that we know of in the UK that provides a sympathetic ear and a port of call to those who are having extraordinary experiences. Marie, if you could let the viewers know uh, a little bit about yourself, a bit about your background. Okay, I'm just a, a normal person um, who's had some UFO sightings. I'm an accountant by trade, so I've just been working, busy with my life, and um, saw some UFOs and decided to come forward with them to Miles Johnson in 2011. I did a couple of interviews and um, started from there, basically. Uh, that's where I met Simon Parks. He'd done an interview with Miles Johnson as well. In I think his was in 2010, so it was fairly new as well to the scene. Nobody heard of him before. I hadn't heard of him before. No one had heard of me before. It was the first time, everything. So both did the interview, but um, I noticed from, from that day, he seemed to have his nose in my life for some reason. He... He sort of dominated everything that I wanted to do. Any people I wanted to see, he would tell Miles Johnson, oh, you can't see that person. It's just going to infiltrate her. And it was just loads of stupid stories and things would be cancelled. And I noticed that over the years, that everything Miles Johnson would go up and tell all these stupid stories. And he's been fed from Simon Parks. Some regression was organised with a man called 
um, Tom Ryan, who's a famous psychic and does regression and hypnosis and things like that. And I said, yeah, I'm up for it. So I put myself up as a sort of guinea pig. And I thought, you know, you've got some tests. I want to see what these tests are about. Can you, are they real? Are you really, be, be, are you, you know, can you really test for things? They have a Miles Johnson had all these tests for everything, implants and all the rest of it. So I said, I'll put my forward itself as a guinea pig. I'll do the test. Let me find out. So that's why I started doing these stupid tests that he had. And uh, Simon Parks, him and Miles Johnson were in with these alien implants. Like uh, if you've got an implant, they could scan it and then Simon Parks could remove it <laughs> for a fee. So that was all going on from early 2013. And I never fell for any of it. And um, but there was sort of that in the background. Oh, I had some spare time. I thought I'll get my stuff out there and um, go to some conferences and have a look what's going on in the circles. Bad mistake. It was all around. Anyway, uh, I don't want to keep this too long. So I offered Miles the hotel room within about 30 seconds. Um, Simon Parks contacted me and said, I'll take it. I'll take it. I said, all right. OK, so I thought, well, he is speaking at the conference, I suppose, you know. So maybe Miles would have had to pay for a hotel for him, who knows. So anyway, I thought, well, it's a good opportunity to meet him and ask him some questions. He's always, I knew he was very strict on what he talks about on film. He won't answer anything, you know, that he hasn't prepared. So I thought it'd be good to get around him a bit. Uh, he's just as bad in real life anyway. So I met him and didn't like him that much. And the next morning he had his conference and he started sneaking away off in the afternoon. And I saw him going off. I was talking, having a cigarette outside. And I saw him sneaking off, saying goodbye to a few people. And I just shouted, Simon, you, you going? He said, oh, yes. Yeah. So I said, you're not even going to say goodbye. And he went, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, bye, bye. And I thought, you know, we'll sneak after the hotel room. And I didn't even say thanks. And um, then I realised when I went to pay the bill later on when I was checking out, or the next morning it probably was, I think we stayed that night as well. Um, I found he stiffed me for meals. He had dinner and breakfast on me as well. Didn't even, because <laughs> I paid for the room, of course, it went to me, didn't it, though? So that was my, I thought, oh my God, he got his hotel room free, he got his meals free, he got his petrol free, because they paid his petrol. So, and he got paid for probably talking the conference. So from, you know, from that minute, I just thought he is just a con man and a grifter. So mean. And then um, my daughter had some trouble in 2012. I hadn't had a lot to do with Simon Parks. He was just digging the knife in here and there. I didn't care. I just saw him as a nobody, you know, and I just didn't care. I thought, let him play his stupid games. Never believed him from day one. And I, I knew I made a mistake coming forward to Miles Johnson. I just knew they were a pair of clowns. And I knew this wasn't going to be the end of it. And I'd probably never get rid of them. And I was right. But um, then 2012... My daughter sadly died. What happened was, I don't really want to go into too much details, but she committed suicide in 2012. And she was uh, sick before, a week, two weeks before she was in hospital. And that's when Simon Parks contacted me out of the blue. I hadn't been in contact with him for probably a year or so. Um, he contacted me out of the blue. I had told Miles Johnson because he actually rang me one day when I was on the way to the hospital. So I said, oh, I'm on the way to the hospital. This has happened. And, you know, it's a horrible situation. So he told Simon Parks all about it. I told him, that, I said, keep it confidential. But he actually told Simon Parks everything, everything that was going on in my life, own personal business, and came home from the hospital one night. And there was an email from Simon Parks. And I thought, this is strange. What's this about? And he went, he says, oh, Marie, I've just been woken up last night, three o'clock in the morning. I had some voices um, telling me that you were in trouble and you really need some help. Straight away, I knew he, I knew him and Miles Johnson were very close. Straight away, I knew he'd been telling my business. I just knew, didn't believe him for a second. But he pretended he was psychic and he was told to come and help me with my daughter. 
And so I didn't really interact that much with him because I was at the hospital. I was coming home, it was 10 o'clock and there was emails from him sort of every night and I'd catch up with my email then in the evening. And he started saying, I know you're in trouble. It was all the Illuminati are out to get you. You're badly deep in shit because you've come forward about these UFOs. They're going to get you. They're going to get your daughter. And it was all real scare tactics. Oh, wow. And, what, what, um, why is he doing oh, this? It was really bad. Why was he targeting you? Why I have was no he... idea. Is this to scare no you? See, the no. thing is, Miles Johnson, he has this really weird crowd that follow him, and it's all about uh, targeted individuals. And he tried to categorise me into all these pigeonholes from day one. And I was arguing with him, don't call me a targeted individual, I'm not a targeted. Because that gang would hang on to me and think I, I was there to help them. And then he called me a super soldier, this super soldier crew. And I said, stop calling me a super soldier. So every week he was doing videos about me. So I had to actually, in the end, get a restraining order against him because it was going on, this was going on for about seven against... years against Miles Johnson. Miles, yeah. So uh, this is when Simon Park started uh, slandering me when he saw me coming forward about Miles Johnson because I did, did a video in the end. Never did videos on YouTube before. Didn't even really have a channel. Never did anything about anybody. Never even about myself. Just didn't do videos. So I only started doing videos about three years ago. Um, 2018 or something, the end of 2018. And when I came forward about Miles Johnson, I said, this man has been harassing me for seven years. He won't leave me alone. I'm saying it in public. I've call I'm calling the police. This is the end. I've given him so many warnings. So I sort of laid out in the line and it went viral everywhere and everybody was contacting me and it just went mad. So he started really doing bad videos, slandering me. And that's when uh, Simon Parks came in as well and started slandering me on his shows and saying I'm going to petrol bomb his house and I called him a paedophile which I didn't he said all this stuff was on my Facebook it's not I don't even use Facebook I'm only on there because I've got a few family that's it I don't really use it that much so I'm going to read out the message from JP and then after that I'm going to jump to Simon Park's side he's made a post as well which is absolutely outraged. I didn't even actually read it. Some of his stuff is just so much shit. I skimmed through it. I can't even bother. It doesn't sink in. I've actually just read it now for the first time. And um, unbelievable. The lies in there, it's unbelievable. So I'm going to prove again. He's telling even more lies to get out of the lies he's already told. I can prove it again. <laughs> okay, I'll read JP's uh, message. I found a statement by JP who was... Um, the owner of Wolf Radio, I think, and who sacked him from the show. But there's a big statement here. I'm going to read it out. I've never seen this before. So this is my first time. It's going to be news to me. I just read the first line and thought I'd record it because I don't like to do something twice, you know. <laughs> All right. Over the years and months since I've been doing Connecting Consciousness show with him, there have been a few issues building up in the background which have caused me to question my choice to do the show with Simon Parks. So I knew it wasn't just to do with me. In the recent show, when he spoke about Marie Kayali, I felt increasingly uncomfortable as he spoke about her and how he referred to her. I didn't say anything then. I didn't know who she was at the time, but I have since discovered she herself was not involved with any illegal activities. I was then put in a difficult place, being asked to block comments on the YouTube archive, something I never do. This was a personally awkward moment for me and has caused me to review things that others close to me and also not known to me have been talking about. Coupled with other things said by those close to him and other allegations and drama about his conduct with clients has increasingly brought up doubts about his integrity with those close to him, not to mention comments by other clients and listeners. There are more dramas circulating and building, but these issues are directly connected to me, my relationship and my radio station. I have sat on this information for a while, but it is building to a head. The result is that I've chosen to end the Connecting Consciousness show on Wolf Spirit Radio as of the last broadcast, March the 18th. This is not for a discussion. That's dated 20, sorry, 4-6-2018. Um, so there's no posts. He said he went to the police about me. He said I was arrested twice. 
He said, um, I was warned not to talk about him ever again. All this kind of nonsense. He actually made posts about me in his on his website. And then he sent this email around to a few people that I know of. I know one was Dave uh, from Shadows of Mind magazine. He sent him an email saying this woman has been arrested. She's not to be trusted. And you're doing an interview with her. And this is what she's been arrested for this, that and the other. And all sorts of things, which wasn't true. None of it was true. I read out these um, posts that was on Simon Parks' page on Sunday, the 8th of April, 2018. Right, here it goes. Dear all, thank you so much for your support. I'm very grateful for all the messages. Many of you have asked for me to explain a little more about all of this, and I've decided to do so. There is no truth that I started this first. When I became aware of what was being written about me, I visited four solicitors because I intended to deal with this in a civil action. However, on hearing and seeing what has been written about me, all four solicitors told me it was a police matter. The reason is, the reason it is a police matter is due to the following reasons. First of all, please haven't come to see me. I've actually spoken to the police several times and the calls, I've recorded the calls and they're on my channel talking about Simon Parks and talking about Miles Johnson. Now the police have been to see Miles Johnson. He's been warned not to comment, not to make a video, not to post, not to even talk about me. And he was warned several weeks ago not to do that. Since the police have warned him, he's broken that, those conditions seven times in several videos and posts about me. So. Uh, the police called me and asked me how's it going. I told them he's broken the conditions. They were extremely annoyed and said, oh, has he now? Well, we'll see about that. And they were extremely annoyed. So they asked me to compile uh, a list of the things he said, the dates and the videos and the posts. And it includes Ben Emlyn Jones and Simon Parks as well. The three of them are together. It's like ganging up to coordinate. I mean, it's, they have this attack on me. Allegations that I have wanted to see nude pictures of 12 year old girls. This is a lie and was posted on Facebook by MK. Allegations that I defraud old women out of their life savings. This is a lie and was also posted. A comment made at least twice on a YouTube video that this person would throw a grenade into my nest. Having sat next to this person at a Miles Johnson conference back in around 2012 and having heard her say that of another person and on questioning the comment was told that it meant to petrol bomb his house. Posts on YouTube where this person states that she will punch me in the face and on another post smash me in the face. That's why the police consider this a crime. I was asked if the police were able to take court action, would I appear as their witness? I said yes. Obviously, the police have seen these posts for themselves. So far, this person has verbally attacked and threatened violence against me and Miles Johnson. She has been abusive about Ben Emlyn Jones. She has posted nasty links against Kerry Cassidy and YouTube attacked two other people. Well, I've not heard of. Now, he's saying I, I attacked um, Kerry Cassidy. I've done one video about Ben Emlyn Jones because I called him out on something. He's going off uh, doing videos about me. Um, Miles Johnson is a separate issue altogether because I have a long-standing grievance with him over a period of time. The police are looking at um, uh, militia, har harassment of me and my material with malicious intent over a long period of time. Um, Extortion is trying to extort fifteen thousand pounds of, of uh, from me to get the copyrights for my video, so he won't carry on harassing me for years and years and years, um, and stalking harassment. Even though he's blocked, he, he's been clearly stalking me over the years by, you know, making posts, comments about my posts, but my Facebook posts, and even though he's blocked, he's able to see them under different names, obviously. So the police have all that. And the videos he's made, you know, slandering me again, defaming me, and even accusing me of murder, accusing me of being a, a Korean spy, and threatening to shoot me, 
um, all sorts of stupid things. The police have all this. So, the, Simon Parks, the police have not come to see me. You have not gone to the police. I have not been warned. It's me who's gone to the police and they are looking into all of you. And another thing with Miles Johnson as well is this list of over 400 porn sites that they're looking into and they are looking into intelligence on Miles Johnson. And there's also um, uh, some investigators in Canada, I believe, French Canada, who have spent years doing investigations on these UFO people, well, on different things, porn sites and child trafficking and things like that. And these people have come up. The ISP addresses Kerry Cassidy, I know David Wilcock, um, Miles Johnson, definitely I remember those three, but I've printed the list. They've contacted me, we spoke, they passed the information over to the FBI. So this is very serious and these people are all connected, all part running the same porn sites, so all connected um, and running shenanigans all over the place. So uh, Simon Parks, please haven't been to see me, lies there. This is why the police are involved. All present, there is some nasty energy at work and I ask you all to think of light and love. First of all, you did start it. You did the comment about me on the radio show calling me all sorts. So yes, you did start it, you fucking liar. Right, what's the rest? Let me see. Four solicitors? You went to four solicitors, you dipshit. A man who pleads poverty is going to four solicitors for the same bullshit that doesn't won't stand up in a monkey court, as I said. Right, the police matter is due to the following allegations. Allegations that I've wanted to see male pictures, uh, sorry, nude pictures of 12 year old girls. This is a lie I was posted on Facebook. Fucking prove it. The police have seen nothing on my Facebook because it was never there. There is allegations about you asking 12 year old girls for nude pictures, but it's not for me. And I have found the source and I will be passing that on to the police. And it's nothing whatsoever to do with me. It was a couple of years ago and you know who it is. Does the name Laura ring a bell? Well, that's not for me, that's from somebody else. So what's the next one? Allegations that I defraud old women out of their life savings. This is a lie, also posted. Where is that posted? Prove it, you prick. Prove it. Like I'm proving everything about you, you've proved nothing about me. So pr start proving this bullshit. Another one, comment made at least twice on YouTube that this person throw a grenade into my nest. What I said was, I'm like a grenade and I will blow people's nests, little cosy nests apart. Hardly the same as throwing a grenade into your house or something like that, you fucking dipstick. Having, the having sat next to this person at a Miles Conference Johnson conference. First of all, you stink like a fucking pig. There's no way I would have sat next to you. So that's a lie for a start. So in around 2012, yeah, and I paid for your hotel room and you stiffed me for meals, you, you low life scumbag. So having sat next to this person, having heard to say of another person on questioning the comment, was told that it meant to throw, to petrol bomb his house. Right, I'm Irish. Petrol bomb a house, that's a racist comment, you piece of shit. I'm going to the police, that is a downright racist comment because I'm Irish, referring to a petrol bomb. Who am I going to petrol bomb? I was at a conference, seeing people, listening to people, so who am I going to petrol bomb? You were sitting next to me. I sat the other side of the room and that's on video, you can see that very clear, I'm a mile away from you. So sitting next to me and saying that, you're full of shit, another lie. So the other bit of this email here, the other bit of your post, you claim, you know I was a dodgy character and you tried to took your distance from me. Well, actually, <laughs> again, I can prove you to be a complete fucking ridiculous liar. Because I was even shocked at the emails I had. I forgot, completely forgot about all these emails I had from you. When you were actually trying to chat me up, asking me where I live, am I a single? Oh, we're soulmates, we're so alike, we're so, we're the only ones that are genuine. Or, I, 
Oh, you have so much email. I didn't even, I forgot even I had these. You're chatting me off, finding out where I live, pan signs in your eyes when I say Kensington. Oh, wow. And then you started uh, trying to hook me in from there. It's all very clear. And the emails here, you're flirting like a lunatic. It made, they made me want to vomit. So if you just say you tried to distance yourself, again, I can prove it's a lie. All that's lies. So uh, there again, the police haven't come to see me, lies. And in no way did you try to distance yourself. You tried your best to meet me. And over weeks I have all the emails and I'm going to be reading them out and I'm going to print them all, put them all, post them all. And uh, we'll see now. I mean, again, so many lies just to backtrack and get yourself out of the lies you've already told. You've told more lies and I can prove them as well. <laughs> The police said you can't go making false allegations. Well, again, you've made these allegations yourself. I've never said this. You've made these allegations yourself. So what you went to the police with is beyond me. Um, what I went to the police with is a pile like this of emails, texts, and everything else, and answering my messages, posts, videos, the lot. So, uh... <laughs> So he's so, getting away with this. It sounds like her, her harassment. Um, uh, you know, I did I'll... speak to the police about him. I put the calls to the police on my channel the other day, actually. I came across a long one where I explained to the police what was going on. And they said to me, this is malicious communication and you have got a case and we urge you to go with it. But then he took the post down immediately. He didn't mention me again and it's, he got sacked from the radio show and he took the, anything down that he'd referred to me. So I thought, well, there's no point in still complaining. You know, the police will say, well, he's stopped now. So do you still want to go ahead with it or whatever? So I thought, well, he's stopped. So there's no point. So he hasn't really bothered me since then. But then I started looking through the emails about this, um, what he was trying to manipulate with, with me with when my daughter was ill. And he was going on about this master and slave kind of stuff. He said, if, um, if he helps, he can help my daughter and but we would have to become his slaves and he our master. And I didn't know what that meant. And I have the emails and going through them all. Wait, sorry. This is when I know, daughter was, was, was ill, right? In and hospital, he, he yeah. He was emailing. Yeah, it was about a week before she died. He was emailing yeah. you a week before your daughter died because uh, Miles, I guess, had told him the situation yeah. that you, you you had confided in Miles. Told him everything, yeah. And so he'd gone ahead and told yeah. Simon, and Simon started emailing you out of the blue, uh, saying that he could yeah. save your daughter, um, but you'd have to what become his slave. Yeah. But we would have to become his master. We would. Sorry, sorry, you're breaking up. We um, would have to become his slave and he wow our master. wow sorry sorry and I, it's funny at this at this exact point um it, the zoom seems to be skipping i just got it's, a sign there saying my internet is unstable <laughs> okay right okay it's coming back it's come back now so yeah. to, to reiterate at this point he started sending you emails and he said he could help your very sick daughter um mm -hmm. by if you were to become if he was to become your master and you the slate and you and your daughter me and my daughter yeah this uh, and he said i have to skype with her immediately we'll set up a skype yeah. immediately sorry i didn't catch him. that last bit set up a skype immediately he said yeah he won and i kept saying well she said no yeah i need to see her i need to see her and this is what he was saying i need to see your daughter for about a week or something he was saying i'm saying well no she's too ill i don't want to see anybody and i have to be careful what i say to her i don't want to say all this because i he was sort of see the thing is he didn't know what i believed i've never got told anybody what my actual beliefs are and in fact i don't really believe quite a lot uh, you know i yeah. don't believe in illuminati i don't believe in all this a lot of rubbish out there and all, especially the miles johnson rubbish but i've never actually said so so he wasn't sure what i actually believed so he was going on about this illuminati you're in deep shit they're going to get you and they're after your daughter and all this kind of what? stuff. Sorry, so he sorry, thought he sorry. I'm going to have to keep stopping this. you. Why would the Illuminati be after your daughter? Um, what? I have no idea. <laughs> this is what he said. I have no idea why. Because I came forward about some stupid UFOs. <laughs> I don't know that much. 
It's not I mean, like I know some big dark secrets or anything like that. It sounds like he was getting a kick out of harassing and trying to scare you. Seems that way. So after my daughter, my daughter died then. This is all going on in October. My daughter died a second in November. So it was only then February, March, when I started looking at his emails and looked back at them. I think, what the hell was he on about? What was he going on? You know, I want to know. So I started reading over them. I thought there's something seriously wrong here. And I thought, I don't want to let this man away with it. I really, this needs to go public and I need to speak about this. But sure. I didn't really, I told a few people, I suppose, but I didn't really make it public. And he was always sort of probably worried when it would come out and when I would say something. And he saw when I first did the interview or the video about Miles Johnson, he jumped in and he probably knew she's going to come forward now. And this is when he tried all the dirty tricks and lawyers, four lawyers onto me. And I said, get your lawyers. I don't care. I'm ready for them. Get your yeah. stupid lawyers. Well, I mean, again, we said before we, we pressed record, you know, the truth is your shield. Truth is my shield. Um, and, yeah, it is current. There's, there's, some, there's some reoccurring themes here from people that are have been have spoken up. I before. know that now, yeah. Uh, people that are speaking up now um, and people um, mm-hmm. that are preparing to speak up but are still terrified of um, what that may mean in terms of... Because Simon loves to throw around um uh, threats of legal action like conf- like confetti and we've seen it before and, and like yeah. kevin moore has had uh this oh you know um by the way our, my lawyers will be watching etc he is very um you know even the other day he was talking about the, the a case that he actually won um, oh, no, yeah yeah and he Bragging was talking about that in an interview and he was basically saying it doesn't matter where you are I, I can I can I can get you and that uh, we've won again and don't listen to anyone on social media um, if you know uh, listen to the courts etc because you won because you won a case on, on on some technicality right so but the problem is 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 there are a lot of people that know the truth about some of the behaviors uh, some of the actions that this man has taken and some of them are dark came across something interesting on Simon Park's website, but obviously he's deleted it now because this is not here. But look at this ridiculous gobshite. Dad, out of my life forever. Carry on down. A very big thank you to Fran for making me aware of how the Draco I call Dad had been using me to attack people and women in particular. I am really pleased to say that I have expelled him from my life and I'm very sorry for any harm or distress that he has caused others using me. What a nice man. So uh, basically what he's saying is, Daddy did it. So all these attacks on women everything he's being accused of, just wash it away, sweep it away, because daddy did it. And um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of women um, are coming forward to say a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people are starting to see that it's not just one or two cases. It's a lot of these people, a lot of people are saying, well, hmm, I don't know about her. She's probably just, you know, saying this for whatever her motive might be. I mean, I don't really see, mm-hmm. you know, what many of these motives may be, but there's a lot of people, obviously, um, you know, there's like a messiah complex around the guy. Like, he runs a cult, like he's a cult leader, Yeah. you know. So does. Um, they, they will stick up to him. And there's a lot of people now asking me that are within this uh, Connecting Consciousness group, you know, mm, this is interesting. Can you tell me more? We we need to see more proof with, and, and, you know, we need to, will these ladies uh, come out and say more and, you know, cause I'm speaking to some people that, you know, are weary and, and maybe don't want to come out and talk about some of this stuff at the moment. Um, but they may do as things start to, you know, they see other unravel people. further. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really appreciate you speaking up about your, your experiences oh, and you. these experiences have, have been there. 
Um, some people have said, well, you know, why has it never been said before? Actually, Marie, Marie Kiali has documented her experiences for ages and, and people, a lot a of people time, wouldn't yeah. listen, right? Yeah. So it was only okay. as a lot of trolls as people. I got death threats and everything, and my channel was taken down. He stroke my strike my channel, so I had my channel with 20,000 subs on there, and there was uh, privacy ones, harassment ones. <laughs> he just overflowed my, my channel one day with so many strikes. Him and Miles Johnson, that there was just no no excuses there was wouldn't even give me a chance to sort of say well I need mean, this is wrong this is wrong so I didn't complain in time and didn't get back to him in time and I left it and after a month your channel's gone I just thought oh sorry I've had enough anyway so I just left it so I didn't even uh, contest it or, or fight about it I left them so they probably thought great she's gone <laughs> you know and I pop mm. back up again she's, she's, yeah she's never coming back and if she does <laughs> I'll try and you know legal action and lawyers and or you know I will continue to to try and slander yeah. Um, her, which is 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 what his tactic was before, right? Um, trying to all, say about all these posts and stuff that never existed. Um, yeah, this is this is awful. I mean, the, the, I mean, the most shocking thing you've you've, you've uh, expressed so far is is what happened when your daughter was very ill, um, and and you've got the emails to back this up, and you know, yeah, the evidence is is all there from all of your interactions, and that's probably what's most frightening. For him with you Actually, and i think with a lot of these 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 people that are coming forward they, they do have texts they do have messages yeah. they do have emails and you know so that <laughs> this um, is the thing mm. i mean he did say to me as well he, he sort of blamed me for killing my own daughter afterwards he sent me a horrible email and said you killed your own daughter you you preferred to pray and get your crystals and all this kind of rubbish instead of listening to me. And he, he actually said this in the CC circles. She killed her own daughter because she wouldn't listen to me. A few people have told me that back. Jeez, and I was just thought, oh, oh, the man is just vile. This proves, this is 2013, 2012, 2011, 2012. This proves he had bad intentions from day one. In my eyes, anyway, he just he just come forward. He wasn't well known on the circuit. He started out the way he meant to go on, and why has he done that? In my eyes, anyway, he's just got worse. Absolutely. He has. I don't know how he has the cheek to call himself spiritual or be anywhere near any spiritual people. There's nothing spiritual about that man. Evil, I'd say, more evil than anything. There's nothing yeah. good about that man. I've never seen him do anything good for anybody. All you hear is complaints uh, from people and the way he treats them. And a lot of them are vulnerable and looking for guidance. And it just tears me apart to see, to speak to some of these people. I do get a few emails here and there and have been for quite a while. And um, some of the stories are just so heartfelt. These are not disgruntled customers. These are people who have invested in him and invested their own time and effort and money and um, are just so withdrawn now and depressed and everything else and know he's been lying to them and just don't know where to go basically and just feel disgusted with themselves which I said you know you shouldn't do that it's not your fault he's, he's trained he's actually trained in brainwashing people he reads all these books to do with mind control and everything else and MI5 and so he can you know he, he drops little things in here and there to give people the impression that he's got all this background when really he hasn't He's just a nobody, a driving instructor that um, appeared on TV and took it from there. Yeah. Um, Yeah, speaking about that, he is a wordsmith. He's very good with his words. Um, He's he's got, uh, you know, a a, a sort of character charm, some might say, that seems to... uh, I can't see it myself. Well, but uh, (laughs) but a lot of people people are easily trusting um, in general, but um, of him, because of that, especially... um, in, in you know, outside the UK, um, I mean, the, the British accent can um, can charm, um, or, or so I'm told. Um, the Americans, know, the yeah. Americans, yeah. So, um, yeah. But uh, not only that, you know, you're talking about the words he uses, and he, he uses certain words, and, and he uses them in a certain way. And some might may say that it's it, like neuro linguistic programming, like um, you know, the MK Ultra stuff you talk of as yeah, well. He does, yeah. You know, whether. He's, oh, he picks up the little tips here and there and he mm. adds them all into his little techniques, mm. you yeah. know. 
So, so what interaction? I mean, you, you after you know your daughter sadly passed away, which I'm really sorry to hear about, um, and he did, did that bit of harassment. Um, did you then have any more interaction or, or or issues with Simon after those things had happened? Um, no, not from him directly. No, just strikes on my channel now and again. There was one he put in one recently, maybe three or four months ago, for sex and nudity. There was no bullying. There was no harassment. There was no swearing. There was nothing like that. So he put a sex and nudity issue in, and they took the video down. It was me talking on the screen, just like this, just my face talking about Simon Parks. And um, I spoke to YouTube and I said, "There's no sex and nudity. It's ridiculous." And they let me put it back up. So you try okay, that was good. the only thing you could try. <laughs> Triumphant there. With, so it's still it shows me he's still looking at my channel and keeping an eye on what's going on. Still stalking. Still, still stalking, yeah. He would be still, still harassing if he wasn't um, probably afraid of, of what you might say. I was afraid I'll definitely get him arrested um, if he ever harasses me again. Good and on you. Um, yeah. Miles Johnson's not off the hook yet either. Yeah. And and yeah, so uh you have all the emails um and you know you have the evidence there the content you've put out around yeah the calls with the you said you said you you'd you'd, uh, you'd put up about the other day about the call of the police um you've you've I made the long version it's a long yeah. it's about 10 oh. minutes it's got everything in there i'm still I, explaining what he's done and what he's doing and yeah. uh the police said there's nothing against my name because he said that I'm going to be arrested. He was telling people she's been arrested. And so I was waiting, you know, am I going to be arrested? So I rang the police myself and asked them, is there anything, a complaint against me? And they said, no, there was nothing mm -hmm. against my name. So I said, well, could you send me an email saying that so I can put it online and say, look, this man is lying. But I have it in the call anyway, twice in two calls. Actually, one was a visit from the police. Mm -hmm. and uh, one was a phone call i put them both on my channel i recorded the visit from the police when they came down so i mean what about simon parks he says he's gone to the police about me three times which he hasn't i would you... imagine somebody's going to be investigating oh, this to be can you tell again. me has anyone is there a report about me to the police because he's saying it here in public the police have gone to her twice i haven't had any complaints well, against in that case, if, you, if the police haven't been to he's just talking nonsense is not had a call from the Worcester police today, very interesting. The lady said to me, um, could you tell me uh, what you know about Simon Parks? And I said, well, yeah, could I? So 20 minutes later, she got a good uh, rundown on what I know about Simon Parks. 20 minutes later, she says, well, I'm just actually calling to say that um, there's nothing going to be done. And... Um, this is the end of it. And I said, what, do you, what does that mean? I thought they were talking about my case, basically. And I said, what does that mean? And why are you calling from Worcester? And she said, oh, no, he's ma made a complaint against you back in February. Or he tried to make a complaint against you. I said, he tried to make a complaint against me? And I started laughing. And she started laughing. And um, I said, well, he's saying, I said this, that and the other. I said, he needs to produce the evidence. She said, oh, no, we asked him produ to produce something, you know, the evidence or whatever he's complaining about. And he could produce fuck all because there is nothing. It's not against the law to call somebody fucking ten hairs. It's not against the law to call someone a twat. It's not like against the law to call someone out on their bullshit. That's not against the law. You fucking idiot. So I said to her, well, I'm exposing him for what he is. I don't care if I get arrested or not, or if it's against the law or not. I'm exposing him, and I'm exposing every single thing. I told her about the emails, the master and slave, what you tried to drag me into a week before my daughter died. She was disgusted. I said, so if anyone should be getting looked at, it should be him. And she agreed. And she says, well, have a nice day, Marie, and I hope your case goes well. But just to assure you, this is going nowhere from you. Mr. Parks, you fucking idiot. So, circulating that um, there's a crime, a new crime number, and I've been cautioned, arrested, called, uh, visited, load of bullshit, didn't happen. They were calling me to actually laugh at you. And um, I directed her to a few places to have a look. So, Parks, again, you fucking shot yourself in the foot again.
Daddy did it. Do me a fucking favour, you dipstick. So, guys, um, please go and check out Marie's uh, channel. There will be a link in the description. Um, Marie, if you could say anything to those still following Simon, um, firstly, uh, what would you say to them? Oh, I would say um, please research this man. Uh, he is a con man. He definitely, and he has been from day one. And I can say that with wholeheartedly and uh, and mean it absolutely 100% truth. Um, I just feel, I just feel for the people who think that he can guide them and he's making a fool out of them. And he doesn't have, he doesn't care about the people for a start. He doesn't give them the time that they deserve. Um, the, I know a lot are in CC and just want some guidance from him and, his time is, seems to be very rare with giving people anything at all, just um, but wants everything back, wants everything from them. They're not prepared to put any, he's not putting any work in at all. I don't know. I really don't know how he can live with himself, to be honest. So I just think people should research him and maybe don't listen to everything he says. Just even keep an open mind sure. until you know I really don't know what to say other than that yeah. because I can see right through them and I don't know how people can't. So it just baffles me that people can't see through them. And if you could say to anything, uh, anything to the, these people, these, these women uh, or, or, you know, uh, the, these people that are, that have been negatively affected uh, by him in some way that had put their faith in him and they've been taken advantage of say, uh, perhaps, or, um, if you could speak to these people that don't feel they can speak up at the moment uh, or worried about how what might happen afterwards, if you could speak to them, what would you say? Well, they could always write to me in confidence. Um, I keep confidences very well and, um, you know, they could always do that. But um, I would say definitely don't blame yourself. Don't feel that you've been stupid. A lot of people are thinking, I feel so stupid now, you know, and I'm thinking, well, don't, because don't, yeah. this man is practicing this on a daily basis and he knows exactly what he's saying and he knows how to manipulate people. He's an expert at it. So when somebody's doing that, you know, full-time as a full-time job, you shouldn't feel stupid being taken in. We're all being taken in. Everybody's been taken in. Absolutely. And we've been taken in by people before him and we be, we'll be taken in by people after him. It's just um, some of them are just really good at it. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> um, but maybe listen to people who are coming forward because it's taken a lot to come forward. Me, myself, not so much. You know, I'm a bit yeah. cheeky and uh, things like that. Oh, I've got the guts and nothing. So I'm a bit brave in that respect, but I can understand people who have children and, you know, other things. And they just don't want people to know that they've been giving him private information, maybe, or something or needed the help that they needed or they were that vulnerable, but we're all vulnerable at some stage in our lives. And then, um, you know, turn to someone, don't we? And sometimes it's the wrong person, the wrong you made a mistake and you just have to think, oh my God, I won't do that again. <laughs> and I'll be more careful next time, maybe. A life lesson well learned and, and one yeah. that, that many of as us... As long as we learn a lesson. Will, as long as we uh, learn from point. it, I think it's the main thing, isn't it? Now, Marie's account is uh, quite some compelling stuff. I'm going to show the exchange of emails between Marie and Simon now. And... I must pre-warn you that entwined in these emails is the story um, that was going on at the time of these emails, uh, which is it's not a story, it's real life, which is Marie's daughter uh, obviously being very ill and uh, sadly taking her own life. Now, this is quite distressing content, and there are links in the description for anyone who is having... Uh, any thoughts of this manner, any suicidal tendencies, uh, or, or anyone that that has family, friends, or any any loved ones that are going through such a situation? So, I will show these um, this email exchange now. I will show her uh, proof um, that this happened and the whole master slave scenario. 
But uh, be pre-warned that this can be, for some, uh, quite distressing content. This is the first email. Hi. I write to you now because I have to. It's now 4.30 a.m. At 4 a.m. I was awakened. You have sat through one of my talks. You know who Mum is. Well, he has been at me again. Lol. You also know that of late I have been getting involved with people, mostly women, who have been or are the subject of manipulation from the dark Illuminati. I am presently working with Cathy Morgan, who is in a match. Mina, the young woman from Croatia, who over nine months I have taken from dark to light. Well, even had a boyfriend placed with her. This bit of shit was called Jim, and his job was to destabilise her while managing her. Well, he is not around now. I destroyed him. Cathy had both boyfriends and husbands who did the same. None of them were met by chance. All of them were placed or meetings arranged. Look, I don't really understand. I have learned not to ask, but around 4 a.m. I supported you. Not help to you, but to another. I have a message for you. I hope you know what it means. She returns to you. She has crossed over the gap between this world and their world of control. Call her to you, as you have been. I am assisting you, Marie. Uh, you may have felt something. Uh, you may, you may, <clears throat> you may have felt me. Who knows? I, I don't have anything like all the answers. I just help where I can, Simon. <clears throat> Straight away, when I read that, I knew Miles Johnson had been feeding my, him my information. Just knew straight away. My response the next day at one o'clock in the afternoon. Has Miles spoken to you by any chance? Question mark, Marie. Hi. No. He answered um, straight away, actually, 13, same, within a couple of minutes. Hi. No. I did have an email regarding the editing of the conference he sent me yesterday. The usual miles, short, badly written and leaving one wondering. What's that about? Lol. Kiss. Why? Is Miles trying to get hold of us? Simon. Kiss. <laughs>